you know, you can always get in contact with us here at Dominion Life Worship Center where, uh, where we're here to uh, minister the word of God to you. And the, our main focus and our goal is to make sure that we present God's will and purpose for you so you can be able to choose it. Amen. Because God's will and purpose for you is very clear it's, uh, he, and he wants you to have his will and purpose uh, in your life because he understands that nothing else can satisfy you except you have God's will and purpose for your life. Amen. So for more information about us, you can reach us on our website at www. <coughs> Uh, go to uh, cwm.org, amen, and I uh, want you to know, please always remember, there's a warm seat of welcome for, for you here at Dominion Life Worship Center. And a matter of fact, you need to be here. <laughs> I want to encourage you to just get up out of wherever you're at right now, leave whatever you're doing, and just get in your vehicle. If you got to walk, catch the bus, whatever you got to do, get down here so you can get it into the Word of God, get Get this word of God live and what can become active in your life and you can begin to uh, get involved in really having a faith conversation with God uh, as we're going to be going forth in this teaching this morning to really help you develop having a faith conversation with God. And it's a the one of the most uh, powerful and lightness conversation you'll ever uh, uh, engage in. Amen. So I want to encourage you to, to do that. I want to let you know we love you. And I always remember, once again, there's always a warm seat of welcome here for you. Matter of fact, your seat is crying out. I say, why, why, let's go. Let's, uh, we need to be there. Amen. All right, let's give the Lord a hand clap. Amen. All right, amen. Glory to God. Well, we're going to get ready to get into the word of God. You may be seated. Amen. Hallelujah. Bless God. All right. Hallelujah. Bless God. All right. Okay, we're going to be still talking about uh, uh, having a faith conversation. And we're talking about having a faith conversation. Uh, and we're going to look at this about really having a conversation. We're going to focus on being born again. A faith conversation. We're going to focus on being born again. Spirit-filled disciples of Christ. And this is something that <clears throat> God has really been speaking to our hearts about. About the importance of the church uh, embracing this being born again. The importance of it. Being born again, spirit-filled disciples of Jesus Christ, and when, once you 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 tap into this here, and and you and to for this to be manifested in our lives, we gonna, we must get in a conversation with God, and we must do it by faith. You got to talk to God about this here, you know, uh, and we're gonna really get to uh, get into the Word of God, and that's how you really talk with God. You. You interact with God, engage with God. You have to go to his word. Uh, you can't just, just something you sitting around and you know you're holding a, a conversation. You have nothing to govern the conversation by. Amen. So what you're going to do, you have to take the word of God, get into the word of God and let the word of God begin to speak to you. And that's something that you really want to understand, that the word of God is not just some history book or just some book some men wrote to sell. Uh, 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 it did it, uh, to uh, manipulate and control your life, uh, make you do some things that they want, want done. The word of God is written by God, or written by, written, it was inspired by God, from, and he, he moved upon the hearts and minds of men that were, men that were willing to uh, submit themselves to, uh, to uh, God speaking to them, and they had to do it by faith. So what we're going to do, we're going to get into a conversation with God, uh, and we're going to do it by faith. Uh, one reason, uh, that's because God is a faith God. And anything you're going to deal with him about, you're going to have to deal with him uh, through faith. Amen. And uh, uh, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God or the good news of Jesus Christ. Amen. So we're going to get into the word of God and we're going to just really see about, about this. We want. Now this conversation is going to be focused on uh, uh, being born again, spirit filled. Disciples of Christ. We're going to look at that in this conversation. We're going to pull this, pull out a conversation from the Word of God, put out some knowledge and understanding from the Word of God, what He says about being born again, a spirit filled a disciples of Christ. We're going to look at first thing, we're going to kind of we're going to break it down and we're going to start talking to Him about being born again. And we're going to see what He says about being born again. We're going to see what God says about being born again, about the, what the word of God says about being born again. Amen. All right. And, and in, in this series of teaching, we're going to kind of deal with this for a, a, um, a while. We're going to kind of get, we're not going to give you everything. We're going to give you uh, little by little. We're going to break down. Uh, let go back over the conversation about being born again. We're going to give you more scriptures about that. So we're just going to give you some scriptures uh, about it this morning. We're going to keep on giving you the others as we go on in the teaching. 
uh, so you can build yourself up in understanding uh, what it means to be about being born again. And I want you to understand, this is a very important for you to understand, that when we go into the word of God, I want you to go into it with the, with the understanding that this is God speaking to you. God's talking to you from his word. Amen. And you can trust God's word. You can trust him. Amen. It's been proven by him. Amen. Uh, all right. Let's, so we must be. So we're gonna look at. We must be born again. We're gonna by being born again is something that we must be. Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna look at that. When use, use that word must. That's something that that that's a demand of pressure is placed upon us uh, by being born again. We must. It's not an option. He, he's not gonna. You know, in the conversation, not gonna say, well, "What's your opinion about this?" Here? That's not going to have anything to do with it here. Because he's, well, you're going to hear, hear this word must. Must. Amen. Amen. Over to God. All right, let's go to John, the uh, first chapter. Uh, John, the third chapter, the first through the seventh verse. We're going to read this from the New Living Translation version of the Bible. John 3. And we're going to be reading from the first through the, third, first through the seventh verse. Reading from the New Living Translation version of the Bible. And Mr. Red, you can pull that up for them on the on the uh, screen. Amen. Hallelujah. Bless God. All right. Hallelujah. This is gonna be exciting. Uh, you're gonna now. Now what you're doing? We're gonna let Jesus speak to you because he's the first one that really kind of introduced to us in the Gospels about being born again. The need for mankind to be born again. The need. He brings, He presented the need. That mankind must be born again. Amen. All right. John, the third chapter, reading from the first through the seventh verse, reading from the New Living Translation, verse of the Bible. Said, there was a man named Nicodemus, a Jewish leader who was a Pharisee. Now, this is a religious person, and he came to Jesus, and not just a religious person, but a high level of religious leaders. He came to Jesus. And after dark one evening, and he came to speak with Jesus. In other words, he got into a conversation with Jesus. And it was interesting what he said here. I want you to look at this here. He said to him, he said, Rabbi. He said to him, Rabbi. Rabbi means teacher, really master teacher. In other words, they really looked at the Pharisees as somewhat as rabbis and, 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 uh, and master teachers because they, how they worked and, and, and influenced the people and everything. So he was really going to somebody on a high level. He took he went to somebody that had more insight, more understanding, more of seeing the uh, kingdom of God being manifested through them. So he went to that person. And he says, Rabbi, he said, we all know, in other words, we've been talking around the, the synagogues and everything, and us other Pharisees and Sadducees, we've been talking, and we've been seeing the works you've been doing and everything. He says, we all know that God has sent you to teach us. Now, look at that. A rabbi, a teacher of the Pharisees, a high religious person, he, he seen that he needed to be taught. There was something missing in his life. There was something missing in his life. You know, it's good to recognize when something's missing in your life. It's good to recognize, own up to it, and see the need that something, you know, you got to, something needs to be fulfilled or, 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 or put in your life. Amen. So he says, he says, uh, you sent from God to teach us. Your miraculous signs are evident that God is with you. I want you to understand this. Uh, we're going to see as, uh, 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 when you become born again, uh, you're going to start having signs follow you too. Amen. You know, signs and wonders, the same thing that Jesus did, they're going to follow you too. But you, you know, to, to do this, you're going to have to get born again. Amen. Yeah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Bless God. All right, and Jesus replied, I tell you the truth, unless you are born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. Now look at this, he says you got to be born again, you must be born again to see the kingdom of God. You can't even see the kingdom of God. You can have a vision for the kingdom of God without first being what? Born again. He says, I tell you the truth, unless you are born again. Another translation says you must, the New King James Version of the Bible says, you must be born again. He said, Nicodemus, your, your religious pedigree is not enough. Your religious heritage and what you, your, what you, your religious knowledge is not enough to see the kingdom of God. You're going to have to be born again. You're going to have to be born again. Amen. 
Glory to God. Hallelujah. Bless God. He says, I tell you the truth, unless you are born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. The fourth verse says, what do you mean? He said, what do you mean about being born again? And this is what he said. He said, explain Nicodemus. How can an old man go back into his mother's womb and be born again? Again, now Nicodemus was approaching this on a, on a human a level of understanding, a natural level of understanding about being born again. Amen. He said, Jesus replied, I assured, uh, assure, he, Jesus replied, I assure you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of the water and of the spirit. Now the water, what that denotes, that's the word. And we look on in the word of God, talk about the, <clears throat> the washing of the word of God. So the word is like the, the, when we talk about wa water, it's talking about the word of God that washes us and cleanses us. Amen. And then we talks about it says the water and the spirit and the spirit is the life of God. In other words, that's the, 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 it, the, the, the power of God. So you, in other words, you, 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 what, when you get born again this time, and really what it's saying to us, and one translation, one translation reveals to us that you must be born from above. Born from above. In other words, you have to have a high level of being born again now to, for you to be able to really understand what God really wants to do in your life, for you to have a significant understanding of God's will and purpose for your life. You must be born again. A lot of people can't, under, you, without, if you're not born again, you can't really grasp God's will and purpose for your life. You can't understand what God is doing for you. See, you can't even see the kingdom of God, and if you can't see it, you won't be able to enter into it. So it's very important to, for us to understand we must embrace being born again. Being born again. Being changed. One translation talks about, about uh, uh, being born again. It means a complete change. A complete change. In other words, leaving your old life and taking on a complete new life. Leaving your complete old life and taking on a complete new life. Leaving, leaving, abandoning, putting to death your old life, your complete old life and taking on a new life. You're a complete new person. You're a complete new person. Amen. And this is what you have to understand. This is, this is what being born again means. It doesn't mean that God, you know, you just, he had, he uh, patches you up and, you know, you, you come back as the same. No, you don't come back as the same person. The only thing you come back with, you got the same body, but you got a different spirit. Your, your spirit now, which once was in darkness, which once was controlled by confusion, now it's aware and enlightened of the things of God. Your spirit now is in tune to God. You want to hear the word of God. You hunger for the word of God. You want God to wash you and cleanse you. Amen. You make yourself available to be washed and cleansed by the word of God. You say, word of God, wash me and cleanse me. Yes. You say it. You want, it you, you, you want to be cleansed. Amen. You take on a whole new perspective. Your whole nature and everything about you has changed. Amen. And you got to believe that. Amen. Because you have to realize that the enemy don't want you to believe that, that being born again means a whole new you. Amen. The enemy wants to tell you still got to you still got to be subject to the old you. You don't. You don't have to be subject to the old you. Amen. You're new. Amen. You're a new cre new creature, a new person. Amen. You have a new identity. Amen. A new place to live. You now you live in the kingdom. You live in the kingdom of God, and you look for the kingdom of God to supply all of your needs. You depend upon the kingdom of God. Amen. Matter of, fact, matter of fact, that's what we, to seek the, the kingdom of God, the first thing you have to do, you got to be born again. You can't seek it if you're not born again. You got to get born again so you can begin to start seeking the kingdom of God, the things of God, where you begin to trust God. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Bless God. So Jesus, when I say, Jesus replied, should I say unto you, you cannot enter into the kingdom of God without being born of the water, being born of the word. So I'm born of the word. And the spirit, and you're born of the spirit. That's what happens when you get born again? God's spirit comes in and begins to reside in you. He begins to do a work in you. Amen. He begins to reveal, uh, uh, he begins to cause your spirit to become aware of him. Your spirit become aware of him. Amen. Glory to God. And not only that, it makes an impact on your soul. 
and your body. Amen. You know, when you get born again, it impacts the whole you. Over to God. Hallelujah. Bless God. Humans cannot uh, reproduce. I mean, humans can reproduce only human life. That's the only thing that humans can do. And he says, he says, but the Holy Spirit gives birth to spiritual life. So that's what the Spirit of God is going to do when it comes inside of you. It's going to give birth to your spiritual life. Your spiritual life. Now your spirit can live free from sin, guilt, condemnation. Anything that the enemy had once had, on, had over us, we're free from it. You're free from it. You're no longer a slave to sin. Amen. You, you, I'm telling you, you, when you get born again, you don't have to tolerate your old behavior. Because you got a new, new behavior, a new way of living, a new way of thinking, a new way of doing things. Amen. Once you get born again, what you do, you begin the process of start changing the way you think. You begin the process of changing the way you think. You start thinking uh, uh, like God thinks. Or you start thinking with a, a, a perspective of, is this how the kingdom operates? And you begin to start seeking out how the kingdom operates. Amen. How it's going to meet my needs. Amen. How am I going to live successful in the kingdom of God? Where is the kingdom of God? Amen. It's on the inside of us. When you got born again, God came, came inside of you and he put his kingdom inside of you. The kingdom of God is on the inside of you. So your search now begins, it's an inner search. An inner search. Guided by the word of God and illuminated by the Holy Spirit. Guided by the word of God. Aware, you become aware of it by the word of God and then the Holy Spirit illuminates it to you. He, he, brings, it, he brings clarity to your understanding that you are a new creature. You've been born again. You can change the way you think. You don't have to be a slave to your thinking, your old thinking anymore. Amen. You know, that's good news to know that you don't have to be a slave to your old thinking. Amen. Amen. You know, my old thinking, it's, it kept me trapped and kept me uh, confused. It kept me uh, 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 guilty. It kept me uh, uh, in a place of failure. I kept me thinking, if I, I, I watch out how you get up because, you know, you get too high, you're going to fall back down. Amen. But see, when you get born again, you don't have no limits. Amen. You don't have no limits. You go where God goes. Amen. Amen. You sit where God sits. Amen. Matter of fact, the word of God reveals us that we're seated in heavenly places. Yes. In Christ Jesus. Amen. We're seated in heavenly places. This is what it all means about being born again. Amen. And this is the thing. You have to understand this here. Now, you're born again by this here. You're born again by the word of God and the spirit of God. Not by human efforts. You're not born again because you begged and pleaded God to save you. Or to forgive you of your sin. You're born again by you having faith in the word of God. And you having faith in the spirit of God. That's how you're born again. So you have to realize that you're born, you're born again by faith. In the finished work of Jesus Christ. In your life. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Bless God. So he says, uh, so, don't, so don't be surprised when I say, here it is, you must be born again. Jesus said that. Don't, don't, don't let that shock you. Because I'm not telling you something that, that, that can't happen in your life. I'm telling you something that, that I have the power to perform in your life. I have the power to make it happen. You came to the right person. You came to the right person. Amen. Amen. It's good to go to the right person and get the right answers. Amen. 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 Nicodemus was searching for something. He had this question. He couldn't even take this around his, 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 his other Pharisees' friends. He couldn't tell. He, he, this question was pondering deep in him, and he couldn't even take it around other, his other uh, 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 homies and everything. He had to search out somebody else. Amen. That had a more deeper insight. Amen. And I really believe what was, what was happening to Nicodemus. That 
The Holy Spirit was tugging on him and dealing with him about, uh, about the things of God, about the kingdom of God. I really believe that. Amen. And that's what he's doing to you right now. That's watching on Facebook and YouTube. The Spirit of God is dealing with you right now, calling you and telling you you must be born again. That God has there's a change made available for you in your life that you don't have to suffer with what you're going through. No matter what the enemy lies to you and tells you, there is a way out. Amen. And the way out is you putting your faith and your trust in the word of God and opening up to the spirit of God and say, Lord, here I am. Uh, 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 allow me to get born again. I want to get born again. I want to be able to see your kingdom and I want to be able to, to, <clears throat> to fellowship with you in your kingdom. Amen. And you can do it right now. It's available to you. Amen. Hallelujah. Bless God. All right. All right. Let's move on. We're talking about that being born again. <clears throat> Now, there's some conditions uh, about being born again that we got to address. There's some, some conditions. There's just two of them. It's not a whole list. Oh, you know, it's not a big whole list, but there's some conditions. You got to, you got to deal with some things. Amen? Amen. Just like you get, get, get born again, get, just like you get, for you to come into this earth, there's some things that must take place. There's some conditions that must come in play. Amen? You just can't come in here. It's got to be a man and a woman come together and get you in here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Amen. Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. You come in just, you, you, just like in the natural realm. You come in by a, uh, a, a woman and wife, a, 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 a husband and a wife conceiving one another. And then you, you, you come into the earth, earth realm like that. And then you come into the, the, the kingdom of God by the word of God and the spirit of God. Yes. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Bless God. All right, but here's what we want to look at. Uh, there are uh, two conditions for every sinner to be born again. For every sinner, we're going to deal with two conditions that every sinner, see, me and you, and you that are listening on Facebook and YouTube, uh, if you're not born again, you're a sinner. But the good news is you don't have to stay a sinner. You can get born again and get delivered from being a sinner. You can be free from being a sinner. Amen. And all a sinner is, is someone that don't believe and have faith in God. Simply, that's all it is. They're struggling with not believing who God is. Amen. But we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna get you in a place where you can you can get free from that. Amen. So the two conditions, because you want to be born again. You you know you want a new life. You want a fresh new start. You you want you want you want to start your life all over again without all the baggage uh, uh, from your your uh, old previous life. You want to be set free from it. Amen. You tired of you try to you tired of hiding it in a trunk. You tired of putting it in the closet. Amen. And afraid that it's going to come out one day. But let me tell you something. When you get born again, you never have to worry about your old life coming and conquering you again. Yeah. Yeah. Because God takes our old life of sin and he casts us in the sea of forgetfulness yeah. and he remembers it no more. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. He does. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, you, 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 that, you, you don't have to worry about you don't have to worry about you putting it somewhere in the closet or putting it up under the bed or what, sweeping up under the rug and all that stuff like that. No. It's, he takes it. Jesus Christ takes our sin and he casts them in the sea of forgiveness and he remembers them no more. One, one, one of the, the, the other prophets, uh, John the Baptist, said, Behold, the Lamb of God coming to take away the sins of the world. He took away our sins. Amen. But this is how you, you get it activated and operating in your life. Number one is you've got to come through repentance. And repentance is where you just change the way you think and allow God to change the way you live. Change the way you think. See, repentance is about how you're thinking about how you think toward God, how you think about yourself, and how you think about others. Amen? So you got to change the way you think. Amen? Repentance. And it's a, it's a, it's a change that impacts your life forever. It's a change that impacts your life forever. Amen? It deals with the core issue. It deals with the core issue. It sets you free from being a slave to sin. The devil don't want you to repent. Amen. He don't want you to think you even have a need to repent. He'll maybe tell you what's the use of it. I'm going to go back and do it again. Let me tell you something. You can, you can go to God with a repentant heart and you don't have to be, be controlled and live in fear that you're going to go back to sin. Sin is going to take hold of you and, and manipulate you and control you again. No, you don't have to. Amen. Amen. 
Glory to God. And we're going to show you that as we get on in the inscription and everything. All right. And the, the, number, uh, uh, the second thing is a personal faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and his finished work in our behalf. A personal faith. Our personal faith. We have to have personal faith. You can have mother's faith. You can have the pastor's faith. You're going to have to have all these other different types of uh, somebody else's faith. You've got to have a personal faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. You've got to go one to one. you got to do like Nicodemus did. You got to go to Jesus and talk to him. Yes. Amen. And when you come to him, he will in no wise cast you out. When you come to him, he will in no wise cast you out. Amen. Yeah. He won't tell you, well, you done been here, you done been here 400 times. I can't, how many times you want me to, no, that's, he'll never say that to you. Amen. 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 He'll never say, tell you that. Amen. He said, come on, let's, get, let's deal with this here. Let's get this stuff out. Get it, get, get it out on the table. And, and I want you to understand that I've already forgiven you of this here. Let's move on. Get, it, get into the word of God. Get into the word of God. Let the word of God wash you and cleanse you. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Bless God. Reveal to you your, my, the, my righteousness that I gave you. All right, let's go to Matthew, the 17th chapter, and we're going to read this from the Amplified Version of the Bible. Matthew, the fourth chapter, and the 17th verse. And this is Jesus talking. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Bless God. And he says, you know, when you get into, the, when you, I, I want you to understand, take this approach that when you get into the word of God and when you hear Jesus speaking, know you're having a conversation with him. Just take it as you, you know, you're talking to him. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Bless God. All right. He says, from that time, Jesus began to preach and say, look at this here. Repent. Now, here's what that repent means. Change your inner self. Change your inner self, your inner thinking. Now, this is something you understand. God can't do this for you. You have to be willing to do that. That's right. That's right. He can't do this for you. This is something you got to do. He, he, see, because if God, if God starts changing your thinking, he's manipulating you. And he's not a manipulator. God is not, I want you to understand, God is not a puppeteer and you're not a puppet. You possess the very image and likeness of God. God will not violate your will. He's not going to force you and, and, and twist your arm and make you uh, 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 repent or change the way you think. He'll let, you go, he'll let you continue going down the road, bumping your head up against the wall, if that's what you want to do. Amen? But, the, but uh, the best thing is to listen to him and obey him. Yes. Then, you, then you start having days of prosperity and years of pleasure. Thank you. Ask Job about that. Job 36 and 11. He'll tell you that. All right, says, get in a conversation with him and he'll tell you that. He says, from that time on, Jesus began to preach and say, repent, change your inner self. Your own, your what? Your own way of what? Thinking. Your own way of thinking. Regret past sins. Regret past sins. In other words, be willing to, to allow God to put away your past sins. Don't hold on to them. Don't try to hide them. Just let God put them away. And trust that God has put them away. Amen. You know, you know, don't, don't try to keep ownership on them. Don't, don't, don't try to let go. What you have to make a decision to do, you're going to let go of the memories of it. Yes. You have to let go of the memories. Because sin, a lot of times, it can make you feel good. Oh, come on, somebody. Oh, y'all ain't never had no sin. Got in, when, you never was in sin, and you liked it. You liked it. You loved it. You couldn't get enough of it. Amen. Amen. Been there, done that. Amen. 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 But the, when you allow the power of God to come into your life, he will, he will cleanse your been there, uh, 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 done that uh, 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 attitude. He'll, he'll change your love it, like it. Can't get enough of it, attitude. He'll, he'll, what he'll do, he'll give you a new, love it, like it, and can't get enough of it, get enough of it of the kingdom of God. That's what he'll do. Amen. Amen. So you got to have more, you got to, you just got to have more and more of the word of God. You hunger and thirst after the spirit of God. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. So he says, he says, he says, your inner self, uh, your, your uh, past, 
past, regret your past sins. Live your life in a way that proves repentance. Live your life, and you can do it. You can live your life uh, in a way that, that, that and, and what you have to do, you have to, this is what you want to do. You want to recognize that now the word of God and the Holy Spirit controls your inner self. He controls your inner you. He controls the, in, the real you. He controls you. Amen? Amen. All right. He says, so we're going to prove, we're going to live a life that we prove that we, we, we repented. And we're going to seek uh, God's purpose. And we're going to seek God's purpose uh, and, and, and start seeking God's purpose for your life. You want to seek God's purpose, not yours. Amen. That's what a lot of people are doing. They're seeking their purpose. And want to make like that's God's purpose. Because I'm seeking it. See, God's got a, a, a specific purpose designed for each and every one of us. Yes. Yes. And, and, it, and, and they, so, they, 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 they look the same. Because one is that our purpose is, is to glorify him. And our, our purpose here is, 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 is written now in Genesis 1 and 26 through 28. Our purpose is, is to be made in the image and likeness of God. That's our purpose. Amen. To have dominion. Amen. To be blessed. To subdue the earth. And to replenish it. Amen. We're replenishers. Amen. We, we, we're, not some, we're not just takers, takers, takers. Amen. We take and then we sow and we, and, and we replenish. Yes. Amen. We take from God, we sow, and, we repl and, he, and, and, he, and that begins to replenish the earth. Amen. Glory to God. We take God's thoughts. We start thinking like God. Talking like God. God wants us, he wants to see us uh, walking in this earth realm as if he was walking in this earth realm. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. God wants the world to hear his footprints through our footprints. He wants the world to see his actions through us. Amen. Amen. Jesus said, by this shall all people know that you are my disciples by the love you have toward one another. How we value and appreciate one another. How we undergird and strengthen one another. How we care for one another. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Bless God. All right. He says, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And this is what Jesus said. He's talking to us. When you, he's telling you, this, this is what I, this is my actions that I demonstrated. And I want you to do the same thing. I want you to live a life where you cause other people to to see that it really pays to have a repentant heart toward God. It really pays to change the way I think. I'm, I'm, I'm getting good results now. I'm getting the God kind of results because I'm thinking like God. Yes. Amen. See, you think like God, you can't do anything but have God results. Amen. Amen. When you're faced with situations, you, 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 you approach them just like God approaches them. Amen. When, when, when the enemy wants to tell you everything is empty and void and, and meaningless in your life, you do what God did. God, God said. He didn't argue with the devil. He spoke to the situation and said, let there be what? Light. Yes. Clarity, vision, and understanding of how I think. See, you don't think the way the world thinks because you're born again. Amen. amen. Our level of thinking, amen, it, it, it can't even compare with how the world is thinking. I'm telling you, it's coming a time where people are going to draw and benefit from your thinking. You, you, I, but, but, but you got to start thinking the way God thinks. 
I'm, you know, we, we need to understand when you become born again, people need how you think. Because how you think will help them become delivered in whatever the dilemma the devil got them in. You can help people think their way out. Amen. Because when you come, when you became born again, you got the spirit of God in you, and you be, when you get the spirit of God in you, you be able to receive and tap into God's counsel. The Holy Spirit gives you God's counsel, His wisdom, His knowledge, and His understanding. Amen. Man, it's good being born again. Don't let nobody tell you it's not. And I don't care what nobody say. Uh, when you get born again, you get you 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 live a life that's stress free. When you get born again, see the only reason why we don't, we don't see this here because we don't we don't we don't walk in this here is because it's not being is a lot of times it's not being preached to us and a lot of times we not we we sh when it is preached we shut it off because you know the reason why you shut, we shut it off is because we don't we're not willing to change change the way we think. Let me tell you something: when you hear the word of God, it's gonna put pressure on your thinking. It's gonna put some serious pressure on your thinking. You, it, it'll get to such a degree, you start thinking like God and speaking like God, people are going to say you crazy. Yeah. You don't want cuckoo. Somebody done voodoo you. Put some hoodoo on you. <laughs> Amen. Because you're not talking like the world anymore. You're not thinking like the world anymore. Amen. Go to Acts the, 30, the 17th chapter and the 30th verse. Reading from the New Living Translation version of the Bible. Acts 17 and 30. Whew. Glory to God. See, see, uh, today, uh, when you repent, I mean, it's, it's just a, it's, it's such a, a um, it's, it's such a, an anointing Released to you that that it just it just it 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 it's just it it's 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 uh 